Hello everyone. Welcome back to Huntcraft. Have you ever had this happen? Or this? Or this? How is that not a headshot? You might have heard terms like lag abuse, peekers advantage, trade window, hit registration, etc. That's what we're talking about today. In this video, I'll try to explain, simplify, and maybe myth bust a little bit some of the information around those topics. And looking specifically at Hunt and the devs' decisions and philosophies around those topics. Be warned, this is going to be a technical, nerdy, and maybe a whiny video. So let's get started. Well, before we do, please. Push the button. Come on, push the button. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. You heard what she said. The way most shooting games work is using a dedicated server for the game session, connected to all player clients. The constraints of our world, whether we like it or not, is the speed of light. So no matter how fast those electrons can move in the cable, distance from the server matters and that will never change, unless we somehow break the laws of physics. And that's not the only factor. This network infrastructure with all its complexity, the game server is sitting in a data center which should have a good quality connection, but players are sitting at home with a home grade internet connection with all its inconsistencies. And every time data is transferred across, it's subject to the speed of the selected route via which the data reaches the server. And if you're on a shared connection and your roommate is busy watching Netflix, or God forbid, if you're on Wi-Fi, the sky's the limit for those inconsistencies. So all game developers have to come up with some technical solution that can overcome those issues as much as possible to give most players the most convenient experience possible to mask those inconsistencies in network quality. So let's look at some quick definitions. Ping or latency is the time it takes a payload of data to be sent from your game client to the server and back. That's a round trip time. So your client will be sending an ICMP echo request, AKA ping to the server and the server replies back and that's 10 plus 10, then your client ping is 20 milliseconds. So obviously, the longer that time is, the greater the difference between what you see on your screen and what's really happening on the server. Tick rate is the frequency of updates your client sends to the server. The higher the tick rate, the more accurate info the server has on your state, location, and actions. So that can counter the laggy feel of latency. The more frequently you send data to the server, the more responsive things will feel. The problem with that is that it both causes a network overhead as it's more demanding and it's more stress on the server's compute power. Because the higher the tick rate, the quicker the server has to finish processing and simulating the data before it can receive the next tick. And everyone is sending their data to the server at that rate all the time. This means a server that's running at a tick rate of 30 Hertz can only afford a maximum of 33 milliseconds to process, simulate, and send back the data to all clients before it receives the next tick. While a server running at 60 will be way more responsive, but it will have a shorter window to do the same job. Here, it's only 16.6 milliseconds, which basically means we need a more powerful server and a better quality network infrastructure. And if the server fails to do its job in that window, you will end up getting a variety of issues like rubber banding, hit registration issues, and all sorts of weird behaviors. We can see Hunt is unfortunately running at 33 milliseconds, which is a 30 Hertz tick rate. That's pretty low. For reference, Overwatch runs at 64 Hertz, CSGO is at 64, Valorant runs at 128, while Warzone apparently runs at 20. The size of the map and the number of players is relevant when it comes to designing the appropriate tick rate. And battle royales tend to have a lower tick rate. But is Hunt to BR with only 12 players to justify the 30 Hertz and make it closer to a Warzone tick rate rather than CSGO or Overwatch? We'll talk about tick rate later. And the last concept is hit registration. 
Basically, like here for example, I'm firing a slow bullet from a distance, it travels on my client, hits the target, sends the server this data, the server decides this looks fine, and then responds back to me with a hit marker confirmation. In Hunt, the blood splatter and similar effects on your target are local to your client, but the hit marker comes after the server confirms or registers your hit. Let's actually look at this closer for proof of concept because that will help our analysis later. The new army FMJ bullets have a 200 meter per second bullet velocity. The distance to the target is 106 meters and you can see my latency is zero. Obviously, because this is the shooting range, probably my local game client is acting as the server. There's nobody here, so I don't need to be bothering Crytek servers which means we've eliminated the latency factor and we're only dealing with game physics. Remember, my capture isn't perfect. I'm obviously running the game at 160 frames, but I'm still capturing 60 only, which could create an error margin in the calculation. And also, the distance is subject to bullet drop with this gun, which will also add some variance to the calculation. My timer runs to 100 before it turns a second, so we add a zero and that's milliseconds. Now let's see, for a 200 meter per second bullet to travel 106 meters, that means it should take 530 milliseconds, which is roughly half a second. Now let me slow down the timer to see the time between the trigger being pulled and the hit marker. Look at that, I swear I didn't fudge this at all. I was expecting it to be a little bit different and was gonna say a slight deviation is expected because of the reasons I mentioned. So let's now look at Hunt specifically and see how the devs handle those technical limitations. To their credit, Crytek seemed to do a really good job at honestly telling us what the design is and why and what their philosophy or goals are. Whether they're good or bad philosophies, that's a different story but at least they're transparent about this with the community. So Hunt uses a dedicated server approach like we've discussed earlier, meaning all players connect to a central server running the game, and that server is responsible for both the distribution of data between players and controlling the world state, AI enemies, interactive objects, etc. Based on what we discussed, we can then see that this means in any player-to-player -player interaction, your real latency to another player is the total of both your latencies to the server, as you don't have a direct connection to them. This obviously means for any point in time, there are three perspectives. What you see on your screen, what the server thinks you should see on your screen, and what the other player sees on their screen. For the game experience to be smooth and responsive, the game you're running locally cannot wait for every bit of action to be confirmed by the server before doing it. That means the game will be slow and stuttery, and you'll feel a constant input lag, or you will have to completely pause with every action taken to confirm the next step. That's why most games run an extrapolation or a simulation locally, which means your game running locally is predicting what would happen and treating it as a fact, while in the back, it's sending this data to the server, and by the time the server validates the data and confirms your current state, your local client will allow you to carry on doing what you're doing because the prediction you basically claimed was correct, and then you can keep having a smooth experience. That approach is essential to fooling players into thinking they have a smooth experience, even though the reality might not be that perfect. If you look at your latency, it will constantly change, sometimes small, sometimes big changes. And just because it says a certain number, it doesn't mean every single packet or tick is sent at that speed all the time. There will be spikes in latency or even some lost packets, but because what you see on your screen isn't directly dependent on a tick-by-tick -tick real time validation, you will keep your smooth experience while the server reconciles your data being sent to it and effectively lets you run in the future while accepting your data and making it a reality. You can notice only when things go too bad. So we can see a couple of packets being completely lost there. That won't make you have any degraded experience. But let's say you hit a big lag spike, you won't feel it instantly because your local client is still running the prediction, but if you lag too much or lose too many packets, the server then thinks, well, you haven't told me anything about where you are for quite a while. 
Are you still there? Last I know, you were here. Then the spike goes away and your client starts sending its data again, but now your client has moved much further in the future than your last known location on the server. The server then goes, well, you're out of your allowance window. Sorry, mate. How about you go back there and we start again? And that's when you get things like rubber banding. Your character will feel like it's teleporting backwards. Now, all of this can be minor. The real tricky situation happens when you actually shoot a player. There's mainly two scenarios here. Let's say a player is running towards cover. You see them running and shoot them. That target of yours essentially has three different locations where you see him, where the server thinks he is, and where he sees himself on the screen. You're aiming at what you see, and that will be different from his state on the server based on your latency. And then where he is on his screen is different from the server based on his latency. So the actual difference between where you see him and where he thinks he is, is exaggerated if either of you is lagging, and it's obviously crazy if you both are. This is the common scenario when you can kill a player while it seems on their screen, they already made it safely to cover. And then they rage quit and say it's a shit game. And that's where hit validation is supposed to work. It runs on the server, which takes the data from both players and works out what the actual fair outcome should be, like a good referee. Now the devs decided to favor the shooter. This means that the hit validation system will run the necessary checks and calculations that your client claims to have happened. Working out the ammo type, bullet velocity, bullet drop, and all that. If your client claims it should hit, and there's no reason to reject that claim based on the calculation, you as a shooter are favored, and your hit registers. That means the second player, no matter where they are, they will be told, you got hit mate, you're dead. You basically get to literally force your worldview on someone. Your lived experience becomes the truth. Now this means essentially, at least in this aspect, Hunt is client-side authoritative. As they stated, and I quote, in some ways this means that we allow you to slightly rewrite the server's world state history if your client's claim is deemed valid. The bigger your latency to the server, the further back in time those rewrites can go. Though we do have a hard cap set at 800 milliseconds. End quote. Now I don't know what hard means. If it's 800 milliseconds, that's not hard at all. That's flaccid as fu- well, we'll talk about it later. Now, the topic of hit validation and server or client-side authoritativeness is a very controversial topic, and we'll see where it leads to specifically in the case of Hunt. But before we go any further, I want to make it clear that this is a hot topic in every game. It's not some unique criticism to Hunt. I'm just analyzing the game I'm concerned with. Every game will have videos in its community saying it has the worst hit registration. Here, for example, a quick search in an incognito session. I'll just type, hit registration is shit. There you go. X Defiant, Modern Warfare 3, CS2, Valorant, X Defiant again, Siege, Modern Warfare 2, and if you scroll down, you'll see PUBG and Hunt, everything. So if it's just about complaining, every shooting games community whine about hit registration. One of the differences with Hunt is that the devs actually tell us exactly how it's designed and why. So at least our analysis can be more specific to what they say they intend, instead of it being based on some anecdotal experience or analysis that might not be so accurate. I actually found this clip from the devs of a game called Lawbreakers, and here they explain the difference between client and server-side authoritativeness pretty well. Let's have a quick look. So replication is one of the most challenging and most important aspects of developing a solid multiplayer shooter. Replication is really the technology that goes into transferring information about where players are and what they're doing inside of the multiplayer game. There's a couple different ways that you can approach replication. One is to have a client-side authoritative approach and one is to have a server-side authoritative approach and then there's kind of mixes in between there. So a client-side authoritative approach would be I move around locally and I tell the server everything that I do and I'm like hey I just walked over here now I'm standing over here and then the server's like okay you're there and I'm like hey I just shot that dude and the server's like okay you shot that dude 
there's a lot of issues with that type of approach because if you've got any kind of lag on your end, it may mean that other people just see you teleport or do just really weird stuff because you're just telling the server where you are. What we're doing is taking a server authoritative approach. So the way that works is everything happens on the server. The server controls everything. Uh, what you do on the client is just kind of a simulation of what you think should be happening. So when you move forward, you move forward and you tell the server what your input is. So when you, when you fire, when you move, you see that feedback immediately. When the client and server disagree, the server needs to send back information to the client and say, hey, after you did this movement, you ended up here. And then the client looks at that and the client actually keeps a history of all the moves that it did. So when it gets that information back from the server, it can be like, hey, when I did that movement, where did I end up? Is that the same as where the server was? And if it is, everything's cool. You just keep moving on, uh, simulation's perfect, and that's our ideal case scenario. If something happens, for example, you run into another player, an explosion goes off that the client didn't know about and it impulses the client off to the side, and now all of a sudden the client's position is different from the server, the server has control, the server is authoritative, so the client now has to correct for that. So what it'll do is it'll rewind back through all of its history of movements. The client keeps a history of all that stuff. And it'll say, wait, what I ended up with after this movement is different than what the server did. So I need to correct and go back to where the server told me to. And then it'll actually re-execute all of the movement that it did in the meantime. So one step beyond that is to have dedicated servers. So we have dedicated servers. I don't think it's so clear cut what's right or wrong here. He even said in that clip that it could be a client or server authoritative and there's mixes in between. There are many games that still have client side authoritativeness while maintaining tighter constraints to not make it feel so unfair for players. What's really different about Hunt is that it has so many ways to one shot players. Here, for example, it takes time to down a player. I'm holding the trigger, spamming my bullets, and tracking him while he moves. That's a long TTK, relatively. In Hunt, you one-shot players to the head, with any gun now, at any range. You one-shot with a bow. You one shot with a crossbow. You one shot with shotguns. You one shot to the body with lots of guns if the player is missing a bar. You one shot with melee weapons, which means the very, very low TTK in Hunt essentially make it the most sensitive kind of game to latency. And at the same time, we have an insanely big window of tolerance for latency and a fairly low tick rate. How could all those things be okay to coexist? Now let's also look at a common term you might have heard before, which is Pika's advantage. What is it and how would it work in Hunt, given what we know? In general, Pika's advantage will always exist in nearly any shooting game, with varying degrees. That's again a symptom of latency. Many developers try to combat it with multiple different clever ways that can minimize it to a very reasonable range, but theoretically it will always be there. How wide of a window it is and how annoying it can be will vary from game to game based on its netcode. Many would perceive Pika's advantage as lag abuse, but it isn't strictly so. It's not exclusive to a lagging peaker, again, depending on how the game's designed, but in general, it's an advantage to the peaker, not just a lagging peaker. Here, for example, I quickly peek that guy and shoot him. Now let's look at two scenarios. One where I'm lagging and he has a good connection. One where he's lagging and I have a good connection. First, let's say I'm lagging. This guy here is sitting still holding the angle. He's not moving, so my client knows where he is it's not waiting for any updates or changes coming from him about his position because he's sitting still like a test dummy. And I'm, let's say, 
400 milliseconds away from the server. What will happen is I'll peek, see him, because he's rendered locally, and I'll shoot, kill him, and all of that happens locally on my machine. And it's being sent to the server very slowly due to my lag. So the server has no updated info on where I am to tell him that I peeked. He doesn't see me, while in real time, I peeked and killed him, and my client will dominate the server, rewriting the world state, telling the server and subsequently his client that he's actually dead. It's just gonna deliver the news a bit late. On his screen, he'll see me at the same time he dies probably, and will not have a chance to react. The other scenario is the opposite. He's lagging and sitting there not moving while I have good latency. The data coming to him is slow, but on my machine, he's still rendered a long time ago, sitting there and not moving. So it doesn't matter if updates from him are fast or slow. I will peek, see him, kill him. My client will dominate the server state very fast, confirming I peeked and got the kill, while he still didn't see me and will only know about me peeking and killing him in a split second when it's too late to react because it took the data a longer time to reach him because he is lagging. And obviously you can imagine if we're both lagging, the outcome will more or less be the same. Now, if you think that's annoying, it actually gets worse, much worse. The real tricky scenario happens when two players are shooting at each other at the same time. We now have a situation of a fake point in time in the future on player A's local client, a fake point in time in the future on player B's local client, and a server in between trying to work out all this mess. It has to take the data from both clients, work out the calculation based on both players' client-side claims about the world state, which is dependent on their respective latency. The server is still the referee, but it's also told to allow your client to bully it into submission and rewrite its state based on your client's claims up to 800 milliseconds. But remember, we favor the shooter. So what's the world state then? They're both the shooter. What's real and what's not? What player A tells the server or B? Well, if you've made it this far in the video after 20 minutes of me rambling, we finally made it to the heart of the issue the freaking trades in this game. Let's look at how it works and why and try to analyze it as precise and fair as possible and as calm as possible. I'll try. Now the 800 millisecond is not new. We know about it since February 2019, but trades weren't that bad. In 2021, they responded to multiple player complaints about hit registration and they fixed it in patch 1.5.2. Their explanation of the reason why people are complaining is players are experiencing ghost bullets. That means you're shooting, it seems like it should hit on your screen, but you don't get any hit markers and a second later you die. The reason for that, and rightly so, the other player on his screen has already killed you and told the server that you died. And the server took his word for it. You're at the same time probably lagging and shooting him. You're sending your shots to the server but the server is like, come on, mate, you can't shoot when you're dead. I know you're dead. That's fake news. So you get a couple of shots that don't get validated, and then you get the sad news and you die on your screen, which is obviously annoying. But if you were lagging, why should that be the other player's problem? He shot you fair and square and has a good connection. And what we noticed is that many hits were invalidated around the player who shot a dying. So the problem was uh, that the shots were invalidated because they hit something after you were dead on the server. And that was basically the majority of invalidations that we could see in the telemetry. We fixed that now. So it means that your bullets will still hit uh, and will be valid after your death. From the other player's perspective though, for him, basically everything was fine because from his perspective, he killed you before you shot at him. So he didn't complain, he killed you and everything was fine for him and he didn't get damage. Now after our changes, these players started complaining because now they get damage from these bullets that were already in mid-air and now they don't get invalidated anymore as they did before because they still basically survive a bit longer after your death and uh, still count and will be uh, validated. Now what they're trying to say here is that they fixed this by allowing bullets to fly 
after you die if you pull the trigger before dying, which makes perfect sense. It's realistic. The bullet is an independent object from you. If you released it before dying, it should carry on flying. Just like an explosive, for example. You can throw a grenade before you die, and long after you do, it will still detonate. There's no difference between a throwable and a bullet in that sense. Nobody is asking for that. But is that really the main thing happening right now? I'm sorry, absolutely not. No. Let's address his claim first. Let's assume those two guys are using uppercuts. Let's assume bullet velocity is say 400 meters per second. And let's assume the distance between them is 50 meters, which is pretty generous, I know. So for a bullet flying at 400 meters per second to travel 50 meters, it needs 125 milliseconds. We know that works because we tested the game's physics. Now let's say the player on the right shot first. That means on his screen, the target should die after 125 milliseconds. Let's say he has a bad connection of 100 milliseconds. That means the player on the left should die on the server after 225 milliseconds, which then the server needs to tell him. Let's say he's lagging at 100 milliseconds too. That means the time between the trigger being pulled by the player on the right to the time the player on the left dies on his screen is 325 milliseconds. And I know that's not perfectly accurate because it's not that simple and there's multiple other factors and calculations that can affect that number, but it's a demonstrative figure that is still close to reality. Now let's say the player on the left shoots a femtosecond before the bullet hits his face. The player on the right will only know that from the server, which means on the server, the player on the left has to pull the trigger before those 125 milliseconds because he's shooting the same gun. And we're assuming he's at 100 milliseconds, which means he has to shoot in real time in less than or equal 225 milliseconds. This is the maximum allowed window for the scenario he's describing, where a player shooting before the bullet kills him should have the bullet still rightfully register a hit. Now I assumed both players having a bit of a bad connection. I also assumed 50 meters, which is nowhere near CQC where trades are more common. And yet, do you see any number anywhere near 800? Whether the 800 is a one-way allowance or a ping, which would be 400 one-way, that means they way overshoot his claim of a fix by the existence of this stupid wide window of allowance. How the hell does any of that make sense? What am I missing here? They said, with the release of update 1.5.2, we included a fix for these kinds of validation instances. And since the update's release, we have been monitoring and investigating data from the game. We are pleased to let you know that we have seen a big improvement in hit registration issues. In addition, as a result of making hit registration more precise, with fewer fair shots being invalidated and more fair and accurate exchange of hits, we have seen a proportionate increase in kill trades which sounds like they think kill trades are a good thing, a symptom of success. That's so confusing. Yeah, so uh, to me, it sounds like uh, these uh, trades now are more of a consequence of uh, the changes we made and it's not really uh, negative. So it's how it's supposed to happen because the bullet was already flying in the air, so it should still hit the other hunter. But if that's not the case, is this something that will stay like this in the game? Or uh, do we have any plans to change uh, that? So yes, it will probably um, stay like that because you won't get damaged if the other player didn't shoot you. So you basically killed the other player while his bullet was already in mid-air and now it will actually count. It will be uh, validated, not invalidated anymore. Uh, and that means you will also receive damage from this bullet that was already shot by him. So it's not like uh, a bug or anything. It's uh, because the mid-air bullets are not invalidated anymore. And this enables um, more kill trades. Well, he confirms it. Nothing is wrong here. It's going to stay like this. And he's still talking as if trades equals fairness to a player who shot right before they died. Died where? How the hell do they think any of this makes sense? And they never really explained what the fix is exactly. But for me, the only logical conclusion is, 
and this is not any information that I know or has been clearly stated anywhere that I'm aware of. This is just my logical conclusion based on the before and after behaviors and the technical details they've given us. I could be talking out of my ass here, consider it a tinfoil. I think all they did is they made the 800 millisecond a two-way street. Let me explain. Before 2021, the 800 millisecond existed and every player is entitled to it. But in the case of a trade situation, I think using this window was exclusive. What I mean by that is, let's say two players are shooting at each other. One is at 200 ms and the other is at 250. They're both within the rewrite allowance time, right? They're both theoretically entitled to the 800 millisecond allowance. But in that scenario, they're actually fighting for who gets to the server first, which means if they both shoot at the same time in real time, the player with the 200 millisecond latency will get to the server first and confirm the kill. Now the second player coming in 50 milliseconds late, which is within the 800 millisecond window, will be denied his shots because he was dead on the server. All they did, I think, is just allow that second player to still write back to the server, even though based on the first player's claim, he's already dead on the server. Validating his shots and getting a kill instead of nothing. So in theory, they maximize the window for trades end to end. Let's look at the scenarios. If two players are trading and have a good connection, then the 800 millisecond is nearly irrelevant. If two players are trading and they both have equally bad connections, they will more likely trade and they will both have a bad experience and be annoyed by the trade. But now, when a player with say 20 milliseconds comes up against a player with 200 plus milliseconds, it becomes insanely unfair and gives the high ping player an equal chance they just don't deserve. While they will still be annoyed by the trade because they think they got the kill first. So now both are annoyed. They basically fixed nothing. All they did in 2021 is make the game worse for more people and not better for anyone. And it takes one or two players with high ping to make the experience of the 10 other players on the server feel unfair. How is that good? How does that fix anything? So the idea is if a group of players complain, we are happy to inform you that we have achieved equality. Everyone's experience will be equally shit. We're all in it together. But don't get me wrong, I'm not somehow trying to shit on players with a bad connection. But why should it be the problem of everyone else? You either get a better connection, or not buy or refund the game. Or, Crytek shouldn't sell the game in a location where they don't have local servers with reasonable latency to support the player base. Nobody buys a video game to enjoy playing, only to have to accept random strangers online making your experience bad just because they have a bad connection. What is that, a charity? I don't have sympathy towards a person with a bad connection who just makes my experience bad. Why is it my problem? And it's not like that person has a good experience. A lagging player has an overall bad experience anyway. Does it make it better if we make everyone else experience equally shit? What is that, communism? In the end, I don't claim to have a magical solution. But if Crytek still claim that Hunt is a competitive game, which they seem to be doing everything in their power to make it not be that, they cannot have such bad latency tolerance. They should have better tick rate. They also should implement the ping limits they claimed will be coming with the new engine update, which don't seem to be in effect at all and they have been completely radio silent about the topic since the relaunch as far as I know. They clearly rushed this update. We know they promised direct storage when they announced it, and it's not currently enabled in the game. We know the UI is embarrassing and looks like it's never been tested by a human being, and with the radio silence about ping limits or the trade window, I just hope they have their priorities straight before the game goes back into bleeding players. In fact, the only response they gave after the update was about the UI, which is a very surface problem. So I guess in their eyes, it's the most pressing matter because it's too visible on the surface. But if you ask your dedicated player base that actually love the game, I bet they'll tell you they'll take a better netcode over a good UI any day. I'm making a video about a game I really, really like. And by the end of it, 
Here I am, so freaking annoyed, I don't even want to log in to hunt. I'm gonna go play Wukong. Anyway, this has been a long one. I'd be impressed if you're still awake. But thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think about this topic, and how many trades does it take you before you Alt F4? It's getting less and less tolerable for me. I still value my mental health. But if you appreciate my work and would like to help cover the therapy fees, feel free to buy me a coffee. Links to support my content in the description. Also, I finally set up a Discord server, so feel free to join. And remember to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.